Hello everybody, my name is Alain Dargelas and I'll be talking today about UHGM, Shorelog and related topics. So UHGM is the acronym for Universal Hardware Data Model and the address of the GitHub is uh, uh, right there, github.com slash Alain Marcel, Marcel is my middle name, slash UHGM. And what what is this? This is a uh, data structure which is meant to be persisted on disk and that will be used as a intermediate format in between parsers like Shorelog which I will talk about later for system Verilog and tools like simulator, synthesis tools, uh, uh, linters, formal verification tools that uh, would be interested in analyzing the, the system Verilog language. So the, the purpose of this data model, which is persisted on disk, as I mentioned, is to support the entire subset of the uh, uh, IEEE 2017 Verilog, whatever is synthesizable, uh, simulatable, uh, all the objects that the language uh, would represent in its, uh, in its object model. And to do so, I, I decided to use the uh, the object model itself, the system Verilog object model, which is part of the standard, at least follow its scheme. And then UHDM is an actual implementation uh, with uh, specific C++ classes, VPI access, serialization, deserialization, uh, a particular a worker that uh, decompile the model, a listener uh, design pattern, uh, an elaborator and unific equator, which can be working uh, both pre and post serialization. But all of those are details of the implementation, essentially, which, uh, which is the, uh, the UHDM itself, but following the uh, system very low object model as per standard or as closely as possible. So the way I decided to do this was to uh, capture the object model from Verilog, which we are going to see in, 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 a, in a minute, using some YAML-like simplified YAML format, so it's human readable, uh, and it's easy to compare with the actual picture diagrams which are in the uh, system Verilog uh, uh, model. Then a series of scripts, they are written in Tickle, uh, take this YAML-like form, which captures the object model, and automatically generate the above set of uh, uh, collateral C++ classes and serializer, deserializer, all of these things which will make an actual implementation that is usable by the parsers and by the tools when they read back the, the, the compile format on disk. Uh, the the in-memory data model is read-write after deserialization. Uh, so, like for instance, elaboration can be done post deserialization, which elaboration actually modifies the model itself. This uh, this work has been going on for more than three years, almost four years now. In in the uh, most of the time was actually uh, uh, under the, in the garage, not as an open source project. Uh, and thanks to Google, actually, last year, we decided to, uh, uh, to have this project uh, open source uh, with some, uh, um, Google also helped me to, to link with some people like uh, Ant Micro, uh, which uh, started contributing to the project. And now I'm, I see a very good uh, uh, outcome, which is uh, the community speaking up. And as, uh, as, we, as I speak today, yeah, there's about like 10, 10, 10 to 12 active developers in this, uh, in this project. So let's uh, dig into some detail. So system Verilog uh, the, uh, as an object model, like Verilog language from the very inception of the language, which, which is described into these diagrams here. I will have some more details even further. From these diagrams, uh, which we capture in YAML, we automatically generate a, an implementation, uh, which is a set of headers, uh, uh, C++ headers. We generate a VPI a corresponding implementation, which is a, a, um, a facade to the C++ header internally is, uh, is implemented as a facade to the C++ headers. The user who use VPI sees the 
standard C API. And then the Captain Proto schema, which allows us to uh, serialize, deserialize this object model, is also automatically generated from these YAML files. So this whole machinery essentially from one single entry point uh, generates a lot of character, or like I said, even the elaborator, uh, the worker, the listener design pattern, everything is automatically generated from a single uh, entry point here. Here we, I have a first uh, uh, detail of uh, uh, what's going on with this object, uh, uh, object model from Verilog. This is one of the typical diagrams you would find in the object model in the, in the IEEE standard. This one uh, describes what a module is made of. A module has a lot of uh, fields which are uh, um, traversal essentially uh, functions which helps you to navigate Within a module, you can have scopes, you can have ports, interfaces, and so on and so forth. Uh, a module is up, uh, happens to be a leaf object of the model, meaning that you can instantiate a model in the in the uh, system log object model, as opposed to on the right side, for instance, you have an example of a class model, which is an instance. A class is a uh, um, a virtual. Uh, uh, object in the in the model, it cannot be instantiated on its own. Uh, packages, interface, program, and modules are actually uh, concrete objects which can be instant instantiated. And here is an example how this type of relation, so multiple diagram, uh, concern single object. For instance, there's a there's an, a diagram that describes the module in itself. But then there's another diagram that reference the module, like this one says a module in, uh, inherits from an instance, where the previous diagram was showing the inner field of the module. So we go through all the diagrams in the object model, and for a, each object, like the module, we capture from all the diagram all the aspects of that particular object. For instance, this module, like I, like I just showed, inherits from an instance class. And this is what you see here. It extends from an instant class. There's single inheritance in very log object models. And then it has properties like the uh, indexing, the type. This is a top level module. Some of these properties, like this one, top level module, you can see it being uh, a property which is expressed right below the, the module here, uh, object, and so on and so forth. Then there are the um, the traversal, uh, which are pointers to uh, arrays or to single object, like this one says, uh, there is an object reference of a clock of a global clocking, which is of type clocking block, and this represents this particular uh, relation on the top left of the of the diagram here. Here we zoom in to uh, the package uh, definition which also, like a module, inherits from uh, instances. Uh, it's to be noted that uh, there's, a there's a few properties that uh, you, the user would capture the model doesn't need typically to capture, like uh, uh, the type, for instance, uh, the property type should be matching exactly the, the name of the object. In some instances, actually, it, the, the standard has contained some I would say almost typos where capitalization is not exactly matching. So since those names here, like the VPI type, has to match what is a, what is in the uh, system, what is in the VPI header file, like uh, the SV user dot uh, H, uh, SV uh, VPI SV user dot H, then so it's, it happens that sometimes um, the person entering the model has to uh, put some uh, uh, unique uh, character, uh, unique uh, um, typing for these for these names, which doesn't match exactly the, the the terminology that was used in the in the VPI in the VPI files. Uh, another uh, interesting uh, thing to notice on this one is that properties can have cardinality of one or, or more. There is a set of predefined types like boolean, int, strings, uh, over object uh, uh, that are in the model can be, can be referred here. 
the VPI field represent what the VPI traversal function is per standard. So it should be matching what you would see when you when you do a VPI get, for instance, or VPI uh, uh, scan or VPI iterate. Here we are illustrating another concept, which is the concept of a group. So in the object diagrams, uh, you would see this type of uh, relation. An instance can have any of these instance items. And uh, actually, an instance item is a group. Think like a void star. And within that group, only those type of object is allowed. So the way we deal with it, essentially in the implementation, it's kind of a void star. But at runtime, we verify that the, let's say if we add a particular uh, object in this group, an instance item, we, ver we verify at runtime by runtime check that it is of actually one of these types here. Uh, so we wouldn't let a, a ref object, for instance, to be inserted here uh, uh, or, or variable. Uh, and so actually erase vars, sorry, variables are, are allowed in this particular one. But so uh, the, um, the set of uh, objects represented in this group will restrain what is, what is allowed at runtime when the, when the parser populates the data model. So it's not a completely void star. We do runtime checks to, uh, to verify. But there was no other implementation way to do this in, in C++ because there's essentially single inheritance uh, uh, that we need to follow in this, uh, in this model. So the, the void star was the, the closest thing we could think of to, uh, to do this. Uh, um, this uh, group uh, grouping support. Here are some more interesting uh, topologies of, of diagrams that you would see in the in the model. Uh, for instance, here the the actual definition of this object port is inline, meaning that this is the there's no separate diagram for the definition of this object. A port inherits from ports, and a port bit is a, a, there's a relation of one to many from port to port bits and from port bit to port uh, uh, one, uh, one to one relation. So this uh, inline model is inheriting from ports and contain uh, and as a uh, object ref, uh, which is uh, bits, which is this particular relation here. There is another concept here that is not uh, evident to, uh, to observe ports have two different pointers to high-con and low-con, and they point to something which is essentially an unnamed group. And an unnamed group is not something very friendly for a, um, com a compilation, so we give it a name. And we give it a name which is typically a uh, succession of the, the type of object we see in the group. Like here, we, there's an expression in this group, uh, a cl an expression class. Uh, or a ref object, uh, which is an actual uh, concrete object. So we create a group, which is a class ref. It will, sup it will accept essentially a class, uh, a reference to a class of type expression or a reference to an object of type ref obj. So this name group then in turn is put to use in this diagram here as let's say the icon uh, of this ports class uh, as a uh, through the relation VPI icon can add, can ac can access a a member a, a group of type expression ref obj. So concretely, uh, a user of the UHDM uh, data model will have to uh, use it through diff there are several APIs which are which are made available. And uh, uh, this pretty much uh, res uh, resume what type of API uh, would be would be put to use for someone who is writing a parser and actually populating the data model from its parse tree and trying to serialize. Uh, 
so this is the API that will be used, which is a C++ API, where a serializer is the root object, and a serializer can, can maintain a list of multiple designs, so you can make as many designs as you, as you want. Uh, think uh, if you want to do, uh, I don't know, an uh, equivalence shaker, uh, you need two designs in memory, so you can deserialize to two different designs. If we want to support multiple language, uh, this design concept will help us to uh, have uh, a, uh, a layered, a, a top-level design could be in Verilog, a middle, a middle component could be in VHDL, so the design object will help us to do the transition in between multiple languages. Or if, if we want to support partition compilation, also this design object will be a partition, and, and so on and so forth. So here in this example, we, uh, we, we do a mock-up where we create a design, we give it a name, then we create a module, and uh, in, this, in this module we add the properties, the VPI properties, like its definition name, the parent of the, of the module is this design here, we give it a file line number. These properties are completely derived from the object model of Verilog. This is a mockup. This is a cre essentially creating a static, uh, uh, a, a, a unit test for a particular design. Imagine in the parser, you would actually traverse the AST of the parser, which is happening in Shorelog, and then populate, creating this object and populating the, their, their properties uh, dynamically based on what you've been reading. The um, uh, another main, uh, uh, the main use of, uh, of UHDM essentially uh, is uh, 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 resumed here. You create an object which is a serializer. Uh, you can, uh, there's a simple call to read from a UHDM a, a sh a file that, which is in UHDM format, that would be the database that was saved by a parser, and uh, ask the serializer, can you build this for me? Uh, the serializer essentially will re deserialize the, the file from disk. Then uh, uh, here instead we are we are doing this mockup here, so we are creating the design from this function, but you can retrieve it from the disk. And then we show that uh, there is a, a uh, uh, here this is actually the worker, which creates the text output. So the, the model can be uh, visited, and I have an example further in the presentation, what it looks like. So you can um, analyze what was, what was created in the model. Then, uh, optionally, you can here on the designs, you can uh, invoke the elaborator, which is uh, uh, also given part of this uh, SDK, the, the UHDM SDK. And then you can create your own listener, full custom listener. In this example here, I'm creating a listener which just listens to the module and uh, is going to print me some information about the modules and their parent. And so the listener will receive both the C++ API and the VPI API, uh, the C, the C handle. And it's up to your design style to, to choose to use, uh, uh, like here I, I give an example of the, what the VPI call in C would look like. And this is another example with a C++ method call. Uh, both can be interchangeably used in the listener, but if you want to navigate UHDM purely in C, it's completely feasible. This is how the, uh, this function here is actually done. The, the, the visit design is, uh, is a pure VPI uh, type uh, uh, um, model, model uh, um, a traversal, where the listener is more like a C++ uh, type design pattern. This is an example of a pure VPI uh, traversal, but uh, if you choose so to, to do so, and you will see that it's it's exactly what you would find in a VPI application that you will link to a simulator. Uh, you can get uh, you can get all the properties from from the object, all the types match exactly 100% what's in the standard in the uh, in the VPI uh, uh, header files, and uh, you would here like uh, navigate from a port from a module we want to know uh, is it a top level module you want you can iterate all its port all the object you will find in the in the object model
This is a high-level depiction of how UHDM fits in the in the in the compiler flow. So you have your designs, a system very log and, and test bench. Uh, doesn't matter the design test bench in system very log. Uh, you parse them, and today the only implementation is sure log. Uh, to do the parsing uh, that supports UHDM, but there are other parsers that are starting looking to the problem to uh, to incorporate a UHDM to uh, after their, their AST, for instance, the variable parser, which is also developed, uh, uh, which is developed by, by by Google mainly. And we are talking to other parsers, uh, open source, to see if they are interested in supporting the UHDM uh, data model. You just link with the libuhdm.a or .so. And uh, then within, the, you have to write code in the parser to look at uh, the, from the AST, if the parser is doing some any type of compilation, elaboration, you want to reuse as much information as possible, and then populate the data model, the UHDM data model with the API I, I mentioned in the previous slides. F finally, serialize the data model on disk, which takes like a fraction of a second, and then uh, reload that data model persisted into the client application, which is the end, the end game here. And you want to, like here for instance, we've been working uh, with and micro to and micro to uh, read back the UHDM into Yosis and very later, the, I have detailed slide how this is done. Uh, later on, the same libuhdm.a is loaded into the client application and they perform their respective function, simulation, synthesis, formal verification, linting, you name it, uh, uh, schematic generation, uh, state diagram analysis, and, and so on and so forth. This application just use the data model uh, in memory, they can use the data model as a freestanding data model, meaning that it could be their only main structure, or they can uh, translate into, let's say, like in the case of Yosis or very later, the, date, the UHDM data model has to be translated into the native uh, Yosis very later data model. Now let's talk a little bit about Shorelog, uh, which is the first parser supporting the, the UHDM database. So Shorelog is a, is a full-fledged system log parser and preprocessor. Uh, here is the, UR, the, the, the URL, github.com slash slash shorelog. It's written in C++. It uses Antler 4.7 uh, as, a, as a parsing, as a parser generator. Uh, it's multi-threaded. It's incremental, meaning that all the ASTs, once they've been parsed, including the preprocessor, is also uh, made persisted, the output of the preprocessor. All the ASTs are, are persistent on disk, meaning that the first compilation is slow, uh, but subsequent uh, compilation are, are done light speed, and only the files that have been changed in the RTL get recompiled. Uh, it performs some semantic checks. It's not uh, it's not a linter by any means. Uh, I leave that work for the actually in UHDM. Almost all, all the linting can, can be done in UHDM. If someone out there wants to write a full fledged lin linter on top of UHDM, please do so. Uh, but it performs uh, basic things that uh, the things are not completely broken essentially, uh, like uh, undefined modules and things like this. Uh, data type binding, so it performs data type binding, uh, function calls also, uh, method, right, at this point in time I'm working on the method calls, whatever can be done statically, like in C++ early binding, it's the same problem in system error, you can have virtual functions, so late binding has to be done at runtime, but I'm working on whatever can be done uh, statically. It does design elaboration. And the goal is to have also at some point a time zero UVM elaboration, which is not quite there yet. Uh, it has a Python API uh, and it generates by default, it generates a UHDM on this compile output. The, um, the uh, uh, architecture of Shorelog is as follow. So you read the Verilog design test bench, there's a preprocessor. Uh, if uh, you use the uh, uh, file unit, uh, it's, so Shorelog supports both 
the interpreted model of system Verilog and the compile model, meaning file unit for the entire duration of the parsing or file unit per file. There's an option to choose in between the two. So the, uh, in the file unit per file, uh, the preprocessor can be run in multi-thread. Uh, so the parser, if you decide to use the uh, interpreted mode of Verilog, uh, the preprocessor is uh, serial. The parsers on the other end can be run uh, multi-threaded, uh, one per uh, one per file. There is even a file splitter which 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 splits long file into multiple sections, so we can parallelize parsing. Whatever when I'm saying multi-threaded, everything that is multi-threaded can be done also multi-processes. There is an option to run a multi-process, although. You need to have a very good machine to, to show a speed up with multi-process, especially on the I.O. side. But like I said, all the uh, ASTs are cached uh, on disk. The errors also are cached. So when the file is re when the design is reanalyzed, you can reload the errors on the particular stage that was uh, left alone, essentially, that you didn't need to recompile. The parser, uh, again, is using Antler. On top of the parser, uh, we developed this uh, uh, serializer. Antler doesn't have itself a serializer mechanism. So uh, I developed a schema for serializing the Antler AST, uh, which allows us to do, uh, again, the uh, AST in cache. Uh, once the AST gets uh, actually, there's also in memory transfer directly. Not everything has to go to cache. Everything can be done in memory. The compiler uh, does minimum level of linting, like undefined modules and so on. Compiles essentially works the AST and create objects like module, interface, classes. Uh, uh, put all the properties. So on top of the AST, essentially create a a decorated uh, uh, compiled model. Then there is uh, uh, an elaborator, which is part of Shorelog, which does the elaboration of the generate statements, the um, uh, if else for for generate instantiation tree, uh, def params, parameters overloading. All of that is part of Shorelog. The resulting the ex a lot of elaboration is done there, except not, not uniquification or net elaboration, which is done part of uh, UHDM. Uh, that uh, post elaborator, a, a, a module called a UHDM writer, generates the UHDM uh, uh, compile uh, model on disk. And then there's a UHDM coverage optional that can be run, which uh, allows us to analyze what did we miss from the design. Uh, did we get all the objects represented uh, line by line, or we actually missed the entire section because non-supported uh, features, for instance? This is very helpful whenever we start working on a new core to find out uh, what uh, what we are missing from the from system Verilog support. This is an example of the debugging capabilities that you have with Shorelog. So let's take this particular test case, not very complicated, a module top input A and module. So it's a single uh, a, a module without any, any statement. This is what the Antler AST gives post uh, uh, serialization. So this is a view which is done uh, uh, Antler as magnificent uh, schematic viewers for, for AST. So there is also a way to uh, look at that using the Antler GUI. Uh, but the Antler GUI is all in Java, all that. So we cannot embed that in Shorelog itself. So here there is a dump, uh, which is in a text in a text format. And uh, the uh, uh, I'll be happy to answer any question in a, in a later presentation on all of what, what those numbers mean. But essentially, they are unique ID for every object. Like for instance, this rule, the top level rule, has a unique ID of 14, and then has no uh, uh, child. It's in the line one. The top level rule actually implicitly called the source level uh, rule, which is uh, uh, a parent is uh, ID 14. Uh, and the child of this source level rule is uh, ID 12, which is a description. And this follows, follows exactly the BNF of system language. 
So from the BNF, it's easy to write the compilation step uh, uh, once you understand from the BNF and for, from the uh, text output of the AST. Uh, once you know how to navigate that, it's quite easy to write how to create, let's say, a module object in, uh, in Shorelog and to start developing uh, support for new, new statements. And here is the corresponding output that USGM gives you for the same example. So once everything has been compiled, has been elaborated, uh, you get this uh, compact version, uh, uh, which is less verbose than the AST, and that contains uh, more richer information. For instance, uh, this one says that in the design, uh, how many top level modules? Only one, this module top, it's part of the working directory. USGM supports libraries and configuration also, I should mention that. And uh, uh, this is like file and line where this module is, is defined. The name of the module, it has a port and uh, following the, the VPI, uh, again, uh, uh, convention. Um, the port is named A, this is the line of declaration, what's the direction, so this compilation essentially helps us to get to this state, and what is the low cone of this uh, module, so the concept of low cone and high cone, like in the standard, are supported, and the low cone is reference object, and the binding on the actual object is done here, this is very trivial, so everything is kind of repeating itself, uh, but in most complex, in more complex cases, the uh, low con, the actual port declaration, and the high con are very different in very different part of the source code. So it's good to have all the files and lines. Here is a slide that uh, uh, describes the and micro uh, integration into uh, Yosis. Uh, so and micro has been the, the main contributor to this. So they they take USGM. Uh, as a library and uh, the output of Shorelog. And then through, uh, so custom code has to be written to uh, navigate the UHDM using the VPI interface to populate the Yosis AST. And Yosis, this is the regular Yosis code from its AST, generates uh, is a, a, a RTL uh, intermediate language generator and does its own uh, passes and create the, 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 its own synthesis flow and create the netlist. So these are the URL where you can see this work in progress. It's already working with uh, for a lot of uh, unit tests for some of the major modules of the IBEX core. Uh, and we are uh, 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 working toward supporting the full uh, open source, open Titan project, hopefully soon. Similarly, uh, and Micro has also been developing this uh, 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 client ap side application starting from USGM, where they uh, populate the uh, data model of uh, Verilator, uh, the Verilator AST, and uh, go through the regular Verilator compilation of the, the compiled C++ model. Same thing here, we are working on the OpenTitan project and uh, uh, one module at a time adding support until we get a, uh, a, uh, a complete simulation a simulation model. A word on uh, SVTest. SVTest is an open source uh, regression project uh, sponsored by Google that uh, uh, essentially um, uh, checks the readiness of a lot of open source tools uh, uh, regarding system verilog support. So, it happens that Shorelog enjoys the top rank in, uh, this is just a part, a part, a part, a partly uh, a cut, a cut of a snapshot of the, the, the website. It has many, many tests. And Shorelog, Shorelog actually has the highest uh, um, support rate of system Verilog. It's also the slowest of the parser. Unfortunately, Antler runtime is pretty slow. It gives very good error message. Uh, but the parser generator is quite slow. We are going to try to work on that to speed up the runtime. But uh, so here you can see a Shorelog parser. There are some very good parsers out there also like a SV parser that supports a lot of the, a lot of the language or Slang. This particular slice of the, 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 the page doesn't show uh, too good of a, a, 
a result for Slang, but the rest is actually quite good. Uh, so uh, there are several very good parsers. They are, they are very fast parsers. Uh, uh, and uh, now you see also the UHDM very later integration, the UHDM UOSIS, and the base UOSIS and very later. So on this page, you can keep track of the progress of how much we support of the uh, uh, how much we support the language. Also, the variable um, uh, front end, which is very fast, which is more like oriented to to uh, to linting and not not so much on compilation. So what's the what's the future uh, of uh, uh, UHDM? So we we definitely want to finish system verilog support, especially all the test bench aspect of it. Uh, which is still very much in progress. Uh, the HDL is not of the book. Uh, there is another uh, um, uh, uh, parser that is using Antler out there, uh, HDL converter, I think, that is uh, that is can support uh, the HDL. So why not? Uh, there is a, a possibility to support Chisel. So whatever different different languages. Uh, today, Shorelog is the only one generating UHDM. The variable, as I mentioned before, is uh, uh, another parser very fast that we can. Uh, we are going to start looking at to see if we can generate UHDM from it. Then, on the client side, you can imagine all kinds of applications. So today, uh, we have definitely Yosis in the works, and very later, uh, there is a talk to create some. Uh, Common code for the synthesizable uh, subset of, of system Verilog could be actually taken out of the, our integration that we are doing in Yosis right now. Uh, some common functionality that uh, uh, people can be using to write linters and, and uh, uh, state machine extractors, schematic viewers, uh, name it. And also, we can uh, start looking at other existing open source simulators like Icarus. Uh, new uh, distributed simulator uh, that's a little bit further down the road, but you can imagine this uh, on the on the back end side. The number of application is pretty much uh, infinite. Thank you uh, so much for listening to this talk, and I hope you uh, 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 will read the paper uh, also, and that you will try to. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, to clone this uh, this GitHub and get it compiled. The support on Linux has been there for a long time. We are about to deploy support for system dialog based on the community. The community uh, open source community has pretty much done everything uh, uh, by themselves for for Windows port, and that's completely awesome. Thank you so much, and see you soon.